Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Pentaho World 2017. Brought to you by Hitachi Ventara. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Pentaho World, brought to you by Hitachi Ventara. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Jim Kobielus. We are joined by Gio Thomas. He is the director of IT at Benefit Science, a healthcare insurance analytics company. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, Gio. Thank you, thanks for having me. So, so Benefit Science is a, is a company launched out of MIT. Tell our viewers a little bit more about the company. Okay, so Benefit Science uh, is a healthcare data analytical company which uh, co-founded by uh, MIT alumni, Dr. Dimitris and doc, uh, Dr. Stephen Sofall. Sofall. And we have one more partner. Um, and uh, we do uh, data analytics on the healthcare side and we work with employers and the brokers to analyze the data and give them um, dashboards and workbooks. And um, so that's, that's what we mainly do and we, yeah. So, so as you said, you work with employers to, to save them healthcare dollars. I mean, can you get into the nitty gritty a little bit more? That's what exactly you're doing? right, yeah. yeah. So uh, what we do is we, we empower employers to manage their employee benefits mainly and providing them the, the data analytical tools and um, uh, other optimization tools. <laughs> and we give them a very fine, clear picture of uh, how these plans are performing and how uh, they can uh, optimize their plans in the near future by giving plan optimization tools and risk score algorithms and things like that. Do you provide this as a managed service for your clients or do you, do you provide basically licensed software that helps them do this for themselves? Yeah, so... Uh, uh, from their own premises. So we are a cloud platform mm -hmm. and we provide our platform as a service for our clients. Okay. So we get the data from them and we provide uh, data analytical tool by mashing the mashing up this data, and they use our platform to uh, uh, see those reports and insights and things like that. So, so healthcare data is is a really special kind of complicated when it comes yeah. to data because there's so many security and privacy issues related to it. How do you go about managing this kind of data? Yeah, it's um, healthcare data is a very complex, as you know, very huge, and uh, we can't expect what comes next. And there are a lot of regulations, and there are a lot of security issues. So we take all this with utmost priority. So our company is a SOC 1, SOC 2 certified company, and which covers a lot of uh, regulations by itself. And uh, our employers, uh, benefit science employees are, are really a, uh, very much aware of these HIPAA rules, and they all are certified. And, um, and we have lots of internal and external audits and regulations throughout the place. Uh, so that would cover all these uh, compliance issues mainly. From an operational standpoint, how are you managing the data day in, day out? Do you provide a uh, data warehouse and to, within which you load it and then from which you do the analysis? Or yeah. just a sense for how, you, how you've architected your environment and then where Pentaho plays into the overall picture. Yeah, so uh, we uh, take the data, uh, once, once we get the data, we mash up the data. So how we do this, uh, we use Pentaho as an end-to-end -end tool because it gives us uh, a very standardized uh, methodologies to process this data. So we de-identify the PHA data, we sample it, scramble it, and then we do the development. And once the development is done and nobody touches any of those uh, PDA jobs or those, uh, the jobs which we created with uh, Pentaho, and we run this in a very secure environment uh, and which pulls all this transformed data into a data analytical platform. When you say scramble in this kind of, you're referring to masking and anonymizing the data? Correct. Okay. Yes. So, okay, that's, a, that's, a, is that, that's I assume, you tell me, that's required by HIPAA that you do it that yes. way? Okay, yes. That's correct. Yes, good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, we don't take all the data for the development, we take only the sample data, and then we scramble it and we identify all this information. So, what kind of results have you seen in your company since using Pentaho? Oh, so, I started in like almost one year back 
And when we started, we had like 20 tenants. Uh, now we have 200 tenants. So that's the uh, that's a summary of the result what I'm saying, because uh, Pentaho gives us a lot of uh, flexibility to standardize and make proper checks and balances throughout the data pipeline. And uh, we had created a very huge uh, test framework, which can run automatically. And so all these things would benefit us to board a client, because right now uh, onboarding a client would take like less than a week. When you say a test framework can be automated, what sort of tests are you referring to? So we create uh, test scripts, and we created a, uh, a test suite framework by using Pandaho Jobs, mm -hmm. and we schedule that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that test suite, what, what we do is, uh, every whenever any tenant comes in, uh, developers can create n number of test cases and plug that in. So it is growing and that will run automatically along with the PDA jobs. So that gives us uh, a number of outputs and checks and balances and depending on this, uh, this uh, results, uh, we board the client. Right. So, yeah. S saving healthcare dollars, spending healthcare dollars wisely, this is really part of the national conversation. How much does, does benefit science really feel a responsibility to weigh in on these issues? I mean, we were hearing, we heard a lot from uh, the CEO this morning about how, how Pentaho really views its guiding principles as, as doing good in the world and, and bettering society. The double bottom line. The double bottom line, exactly. Yes, very true, very true, because uh, as a benefit science company, our our vision or our uh, motto is not to just build some software and give to customers and get some money. Our, uh, our vision is to, uh, uh, to help people or employers um, to reduce the healthcare cost. So um, our data scientists uh, build this great uh, plan optimization tools or uh, risk score tools to provide uh, employers to look at, okay, these are the uh, uh, large claim and uh, details, which we might have to go and find out the reasons and uh, work with them uh, to reduce the cost. So we are giving all these tools for them. Uh, and another thing is the data uh, uh, ad hoc analyzer. Our users love it because they, we provided a simplified cube for them to drag and drop and create the reports. And they can easily drag like a couple of uh, data elements and come up with, okay, these are the paid amounts which we, we paid last month. And uh, this has to go down. So they can come up with their own strategies to make them make it down at least for the next year enrollment. In terms of users being able to, on a self-service basis, define their views and the reports, sort of, do you take that intelligence that you gain from users and then use that, bring that back into the basic service in terms of adjusting the data model, the set of canned reports or dashboards you provide? What, what do you do in that regard? Yeah, so um, we have uh, a custom uh, insight uh, reports, which would give a pretty good idea about uh, what this uh, data meant to be for the customers, like drug dashboards or large claimants or quality measures or things like that. We also have another data science group works on this um, artificial AI tools or machine learning algorithms to provide more uh, predictive analysis. So that would give uh, users to a different perspective of, okay, if we do this, we can reduce the cost. Is that Weka or are you, uh, No, we are, are using, predictive? no, we, we, so that's another thing I want to uh, go back and tell them, okay, this there is a Weka here, mm -hmm. we probably have to start using it. So right now we are not, right now we are using uh, R and Python and, okay. and there is something called GruoB. So that's what we use. Right. What are some challenges that you're facing right now? What is keeping you up at night? And wh what do you want the next versions of Pentaho to solve for you? Oh, um, I'm a director of IT. So I care about IT more than <laughs> yeah. the business. So uh, my challenge is always how I can board more clients within a short span of time. The scalability, the security, how we can make it compliant. So I was uh, listening to that ATO, uh, uh, what are the new things coming in ATO? 
one of the main thing I was looking at is the scalability. That is, there is something called Worker Node. Yeah. That's uh, got announced in ATO. Yeah. Which you can scale as a uh, as a Docker, and you can uh, you can spin off as many Docker's as you want, and it will work by itself. That's fantastic. I'm really looking forward to get that scalability into our system. So you're you're seeing your IT environment, you're focused now more and more on a cloud native environment that takes the application functionality and wraps it as containers. Exactly. And, okay. Yes. So that's where yeah. you're going. Uh, and then you're saying that uh, I don't want to put words so, in your mouth. That's your that's consistent what you're doing is consistent with where Pentaho is going with their overall product platform. Yes. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we are a, we are hosting in AWS cloud and um, with Pandaho. So Pandaho is also going into that direction. Uh, uh, makes me very happy because <laughs> we are we are really looking forward right. to get that uh, working uh, uh, in the cloud. And we don't. The thing is the 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 uh, the, uh, the worker node. What they are talking about is what we were thinking of implementing on our own. So now they have their own worker node and which we can just take and put it there. So that's that's very good news. So you can I, go ahead. I wanted to ask you about the talent shortage in technology because that is something that we, that the CEO talked about, uh, Karen Perlich talked about too, is that this, this real dearth of talent in uh, data science, there was a piece in the New York Times just the other day that talked about how data scientists, that just a PhD can come out and make half a million dollars in Silicon Valley. I mean, what, what do you think will be the will be the real change, and that will get more and more graduates into this field? I mean, it seems as though the money should be enticement enough, really. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's a million dollar question, though. But uh, yeah, even we are in the same boat. Uh, you're a Massachusetts-based company. Even, it should yeah, be. Even with that, we are finding a lot of difficulties to get some good data scientists because the moment you passed out as a data scientist, they are asking like half a million. <laughs> so. Literally, <laughs> I saw started. an article the other day, a good data scientist in Silicon Valley can fetch upwards of a half a million per year, so yeah, yeah. imagine oh, yeah. in other regions, now Massachusetts has no shortage of, of educated, smart people, but yeah, still. But still yeah. uh, so you the know, moment the button, yeah. they have that label, then yes. So these tools would help, uh, and um, uh, building that artificial intelligence on top of these tools would help definitely uh, to to have some sort of uh, not have not depending on data scientists so much that even uh, others can do. So those you might not need the talent Correct. in a way. Yeah. Wow. So wow. I'm, I'm 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 looking forward to that because I was uh, listening to your session in the morning and uh, I'm uh, very impressed with that because that's that's where I'm also trying to see where the world is heading to. Right. So you make recommendations to your clients about how they should structure their healthcare insurance plans for employees. Do you have a capability right now within Benefit Science uh, to pro basically embed sort of a recommendation engine of that sort to help advisors on your staff to work with clients to recommend the right uh, set of options or approaches yes, uh, pulling yes. from the data? Is that already there? Yes, it's already right. there, yeah. Okay. So we provide recommendations for clients by pro by using these uh, algorithms. So we have this um, plan optimization tool, uh, which would uh, give you, okay, if you do such and such things, this is going to go down uh, in the next year. Yeah. Or there is a plan design data. So whenever an enrollment happens, the main thing they look at is what plan they have to select for their set of employees. So every case is unique. So we put a lot of um, historical data information and we put those machine learning algorithms in there. And then we come up with, uh, uh, so we, we train that model with all this data and we predict uh, for each tenant. Oh, great. So yeah. Right. So well, we have that right now. Gio, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It's been Thank really you. fun thanks talking for, to you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm Rebecca Knight for Jim Kobielus. We will have more from theCUBE's live coverage of Pentaho World just after this.